Hello everyone and welcome to the studio. If you're new here, then hello, my name is Megan and welcome to my art channel. Today I'm going to be painting a pipe vine swallowtail butterfly. But before I get further into what I'm going to be doing, let me talk about the materials that I'll be using for this piece. My paper that I'm going to be using today is the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper. Mine's in 7 by 7 inches and this paper is 100% cotton. That sticker is mine, by the way. I designed it and I'm, I'm really proud of it. <laughs> okay, um, the paints that I'll be using today are the Paul Rubens Floral Watercolored Paints. If you know me, you know that I use these pretty much all the time. I absolutely love these paints. I'm not sponsored in any way, by the way. I got mine off of Amazon, so if you happen to want to purchase some of your own, feel free to. I totally recommend them. Okay, back to what I was talking about earlier. I'm going to be painting a pipe vine swallowtail butterfly today. If you don't know, I'm actually doing a series that I'm calling a butterfly series where I'm painting a whole bunch of different types of butterflies. And each time I paint one, I'm going to be giving facts about each one. This butterfly in particular was the one that was picked off of an Instagram poll. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can feel free to. It's the same uh, handle that I use on pretty much everything. It's studio underscore of underscore Meg. Anyway, what I'm hoping to accomplish with my butterfly series is not just to educate others, but also educate myself as well on different types of butterflies. I absolutely love butterflies. If you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, you would know that I do paint a lot of butterflies and flowers. That's just my thing. So let me go ahead and give you some facts about the pipe vine swallowtail. The pipe vine swallowtail butterfly can be found from North America and Central America and likes a warmer climate. Something that I found that was really interesting about these butterflies is that they're actually pretty toxic, so you don't want to ingest this. Of course, you probably don't want to ingest any type of insect, but especially not these, and it can also be harmful to other animals, not just humans. They actually have some sort of chemical that acts as a defense mechanism. And what's cool is that other butterflies will mimic the pattern of a pipe vine swallowtail, so other predators will associate that with a bitter taste and being poisonous. So the adults can have a wingspan of 7 to 13 centimeters, which is pretty large. It's a lot larger than the butterfly I previously painted, which was the Milbert's tortoise shell butterfly. Those were actually like 4 centimeters to 6, so these are definitely larger. And what's really cool about their wings is that the top wings, or the front two, are really dark in comparison to their bottom two. And on the underside of their wings, there's a really pretty spotted orange on the bottom. It's really pretty. I wish I could show you. Maybe I'll insert a picture of uh, real life ones here, just so you can get an idea. So those are some facts about the pipe vine swallowtail. I hope that some of them interest you. Maybe you found them cool, maybe not. That's okay if you didn't. I think that that's pretty cool. Honestly, I really do think that this butterfly is really pretty. I love swallowtail butterflies in general. They're one of my favorite types. And blue just happens to be my favorite color, so this just is a win-win for me. <laughs> I know I haven't talked too much about the process of what I'm doing when I'm painting. I'm hoping that you can kind of tell what I'm doing from the time lapse since I recorded everything from start to finish in regards to painting. I did the sketching off camera because I didn't have enough space on my phone to record all the sketching of it. And I hope that's okay. <laughs> Hopefully whenever I get a camera that I can actually record longer things on, I will be doing that all on camera. If you have any questions about my process, feel free to leave me a question in the comments and I'll try to answer as best as I can. If I can't answer it, I'll let you know. I'm not just going to ignore you, I promise. And if you happen to still be here watching this video, thank you so much for watching at least the entire thing, hopefully. I appreciate it. So we're getting to the point where I'm going to start using gouache, and for gouache, I'm going to be using the Mia Hemi Jelly Gouache set that I have. I like this set. I think it's a really good, affordable um, set to use. It comes with a ton of paint, so, I mean, I've had this for a little over a year now, probably two, honestly, and I still have a ton of paint left, so. And the reason I'm using gouache is because I don't have any masking fluid, so I can't keep things white that I want to keep white. And the last thing that I do is use a pen and outline the whole butterfly. And I do this with all of my butterfly illustrations. It just helps separate the background from the actual piece. I mean, I could choose to leave it white if I, oh, not white. I could choose to not line it if I wanted to, but the white of the paper might blend too much in, in my opinion. And that's pretty much the rest of the video. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it if you made it this far. If you happen to have liked the video and the artwork that I made, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment. 
And if you happen to be interested in my butterfly series where I give facts about butterflies and draw different types, feel free to subscribe and tap that notification bell. It'll let you know whenever I make another upload. And I'm hoping to do a lot more of these videos focusing on different types of butterflies and doing some facts just like this one. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, stay creative and be kind.